Hey everyone, and welcome to a special edition of MASL Midweek for the MASL All-Star Game, which is this Saturday. I am here to talk all about the game. Of course, I am going to give you my prediction for the game, but since that would take like two minutes, I'm also going to talk about my thoughts about the game in general, as well as some players that I think kind of got snubbed from participating in this game. So, let's get to it. We'll start off by talking about my thoughts about the game itself. Hypothetically speaking, I love the idea of an MASL All-Star game. I think it sounds like a ton of fun, and it's a great opportunity for fans and players alike, and I just love the idea. As I'm sure many of you know, earlier this year, I even made a whole video about where I would hypothetically host an MASL All-Star game. So, hypothetically, I love the idea. In practice, though, I have some concerns. And that's not just because the MASL blatantly ignored my suggestion to host the game in San Diego. My big concerns come from what is happening in the world now. And I know YouTube is kind of funny about actually saying it, so I'm not going to say it, but you all know what I'm talking about. And my big concern really comes from the fact that you're taking players and fans from all over the country, you're bringing them to a single location, and then you're sending them back. It seems like a recipe for disaster to me, and I'm sure the MSL will take plenty of safety steps, but as we've seen from other leagues, even with lots of safety steps, things can still slip through the cracks. So I have a lot of concerns about that, and it's definitely kind of made me a little bit less excited for the game and a little bit more worried for it. With that being said though, I'm still really excited for this game. I'm not going myself because of those concerns, but I am going to watch it on Facebook Live. It still sounds like a ton of fun to me. It's been forever since there's been an indoor soccer all-star game. So I am super pumped for the game while also being a little bit concerned. Next up, let's talk about some players that I think got snubbed from this game. And I say they got snubbed, but I'm not really sure if that's quite the right way of saying it. I'm just saying these are players that I would like to see playing, but are not. I don't really know if they got snubbed or if it was a case where the player didn't feel safe coming to the game or if there were other logistical issues. I don't know, but regardless, these are players that I would love to see playing, but are not. And then there's a good list of these players, but I decided to narrow it down to one player from each conference. In the Eastern Conference, the player that I will miss the most is Drew Ruggles. He is a player that I love to watch. He's a fantastic player. He was a great asset for Florida last season. I've loved watching him play in Florida, in Milwaukee, and I especially loved watching him play for the Blast. So he's one of my favorite players in the league. I would have loved to see him at this game. Unfortunately, it's not happening. And perhaps even a, a bit weirder than that, I don't think any Florida players are coming to this game. I know some of the folks over at In The Box have talked about that. It strikes me as very odd as well, especially considering how stacked that roster is. But as I said, there's a lot going on in the world right now. It's hard to say why some players are there and why others can't make it. There's a lot of potential reasons. Moving over to the Western Conference. My pick is a player that I think might surprise some of you. I think he's a very underrated player. And my pick for the snubbed player from the West is Eduardo Cortez from the Mesquite Outlaws. The guy is a fantastic goalkeeper. He is a lot of fun to watch. He makes some excellent, excellent saves. He's one of the main reasons that Mesquite had a decently solid defense last year. And I know when I watched the Outlaws play, he was a player I kept my eye on because I thought he was just a great player and he was a lot of fun to watch. So I would love to have seen him at this game. Now, I, I know he's a goalkeeper and you can only have so many of those players on your roster. The West already has two great goalkeepers in Waltman and Toth. But honestly, I would have liked to see Cortez over Toth. Not so much because Toth is not a good goalkeeper. He definitely is. But he plays for the Stars, as does Waltman. 
I don't think we need two goalkeepers from the same team. I would have loved to see a Waltman-Cortez tandem instead of a Waltman-Toth. With all that being said, though, there are still some great, great, great players coming to this game, and I am super excited to see all of them on the field at the same time. It just sounds so much fun, and I can't wait for it. And now we've reached the big part of the video, my prediction for the game. Which conference do I think is going to win? And let me tell you, this is tough. I think all-star games in general are tough to pick. I think of them a lot like, like preseason games or, or spring training games from baseball. It's just hard to say who is going to win. The games have a very different dynamic than regular season or postseason games. And I think one of the reasons for that is I think in games like this, players, their, their major goal is not necessarily to win. At least they're still going to be competitive and they still would like to win. But I think in this case, the players are probably there more so to celebrate the sport and to have some fun. That's just my thought about it. I could be way off base on that. That's just kind of my theory about why all-star games are typically a bit funky to, to predict. So for me, I think this game is going to have not less intensity, but a different type of intensity. Specifically, I think there's going to be less defensive intensity. I think in that vein of trying to celebrate the sport and have fun, I think players might dial it down a little bit defensively, if for nothing else, to, to help keep each other safe. That's an especially big concern in an all-star game, in my opinion. So I think the game's going to be on the higher scoring end. As a matter of fact, my first instinct was to say both teams are going to score over 10 goals. But then I thought about it and recognized we have goalkeepers like Vanzella, Nascimento, Waltman, and Toth in this game. And I think they're going to hold that back a little bit. I think that all of them could have fantastic games, and I think they're going to pull those scores down a little bit. I still think it's going to be high scoring. As a matter of fact, my prediction is a 9-7 to final. Which team is going to win, you ask? I don't know. Both teams have some great players on them. I think they balance out pretty well, so I could see it going either way. Now, as a side note, I do think one player that could have thrown off this balance is Dantas. As many of you know, he is going to the Stars this next season from the Blast, who he previously played for. But for the All-Star game, he's in the Eastern Conference as if he was still a Blast player. If he was on the West, I would start to lean towards the Western Conference a little bit. But since Dantas is in the East, I start thinking things are balanced out. So, things are pretty balanced to me, and I think it could go either way. It's a flip of the coin, if you will. As a matter of fact, I am literally going to flip a coin to predict which team I think is going to win 9-7. to seven. Heads for the East, tails for the West. Got ourselves a tails. All right, I am predicting the Western Conference to win the MASL All-Star Game by a final score of nine to seven. And with that, I think I'm gonna wrap this video up. But before I do, for all of the players and fans going to this game, please be safe, have fun, don't take any unnecessary risks, and most of all, stay healthy. I look forward to this game, I can't wait for it. If you have not subscribed to this channel, make sure you do so, like this video, and until next time, have a good one. With all that being said, though, I think there are some great players coming to this game, and I cannot watch. I can't watch. It's just going to be so freaking amazing. I, I, I can't watch it. I don't have any Kansas City Comets gear, so I thought I'd at least go with the team in the state.